welcome to the Mom Owned and Operated Podcast, the podcast about moms and for moms, where we have candid conversations about running a business, raising a family, and remembering ourselves. I'm your host, Rita Suzanne, a single mom of four, digital strategist, and provider of no-nonsense business strategies and tactics. Hi, I'm Rita Suzanne, and this is Mom Owned and Operated, and today I have my friend Casey with me, and I'm so excited to learn all about you, Casey, and more about being a mom and having self-care. Can you tell us more about you and all of the things, like more about you, your family, your business, et cetera? Of course. So my name is Casey Table. Uh, I'm a motherhood coach, and I help moms who are overwhelmed and depleted kind of reconnect to themselves, reconnect to their families, and start living lives that they can't wait to wake up to and that are um, really Mm -hmm. joy-filled. I have two kids. I have a son, Tucker, who's seven, and I have a daughter, Eleanor, who's four. Oh, my gosh. Um, Yep. So I'm right in the thick of it. You have your hands so full. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, We, we homeschool. Um, I do all my coaching from home and we have like a small farm. We have like two dogs and three cats and a rabbit and 10 chickens. Oh my goodness. Like (laughs) it's just it's chaos it's a lot yeah yes. it's just a lot oh okay so since you have such a crazy day like give us an example of what you, how a day looks for you a normal day um um well usually I wake up to screaming kids <laughs> <laughs> I mean I am a mom so yeah, that part unfortunately doesn't change too much um and then we kind of we just ease into our day we have mm-hmm. breakfast we talk about um what we're going to do for the day. The kids usually have like their half hour of, of screen time and trying to limit it like a PBS show because otherwise they're just like off the rail. Right. And then um, getting them to stop is, is uh, hard, right? Yes. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Huge mm-hmm. part of self-care by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then we, we go right into like books. We do a lot. We do more of like an unschooling approach. Mm-hmm. So our days are pretty relaxed and we just kind of go with the flow and, and do experiential learning. Oh. It was a little bit easier during when COVID wasn't a thing, but. Um, I yeah. was going to say it has to be harder now because you can't go anywhere and do like activities and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we kind of live out in the middle of nowhere, so there's not really a whole lot to do around here anyway. Right. Um, and fortunately we have a huge yard. And like I said, we have a ton of animals, so there's mm-hmm. always something going on. Oh, that's true. I I always, um, like I said, I admire anybody who's able to homeschool and run a business and, um, you know, and take care of themselves. So um, give me some examples of what a mom can do. Like I, what I see is like a lot of these moms, they start their businesses and then they just get all consumed into their business and forget themselves. So what do you think, like, what are some samples of what they could do? Well, my biggest thing is self-care needs to start on the inside. Right. Um, and self-care is as unique to you mm-hmm. as you are to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. There is no one size fits all self-care. Love that. Uh, and in order to, to really connect to that, we have to be able, we have to be willing to listen to what mm-hmm. our body is telling us. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to be able to connect to that part of ourselves mm-hmm. and we have to be able to be intentional about the things that we're creating. So for me, that starts with having a mindset of self-care. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not about making sure that I exercise three times a week or that I go get a monthly massage or it's not about any of the things that are scheduled. Mm-hmm. It's about where can I fit moments into my day mm-hmm. that make me feel like I'm a human. Right. <laughs> when we're a mom, we get relegated Right. Or to the bottom. Deep. Right. Yes. We go yeah. all the way to the bottom of the list. Right. And then when we're a business owner, mm-hmm. the business creeps up ahead of, of everybody us on the right. list too. Mm-hmm. So even if the kids are still at the top, we're mm-hmm. still not anywhere near where we need to be. Right. So starting with that mindset of self-care and really honing in on where can I make myself feel mm-hmm. the best I possibly can throughout the day? Mm -hmm. Is that starting my day with meditation? Is that 
journaling while the kids have their screen time right. is that um, spending a little bit extra on the really good tea that I mm-hmm. like to drink because mm-hmm. it's an experience for me. Right. Is it like having some good skincare? Cause damn, like, I don't, right, right. you know, <laughs> like, is it, what ways can I nourish myself? So that's one of the huge mm-hmm. pieces of that, that self-care mindset is like taking the time to ask what's going to nourish me in this moment. And so what I'm hearing is more so it's like really taking the time because a lot of times we're just like running through our days, like going bing, 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 and just bouncing all over the place. I know I do. Um, and so like really just slowing down, like you said, figuring out what's good for you, what's going to help you. And it's not even like a lot of people, it's like, oh, once a week I do this, you know, but you're saying, let's do this daily. Let's do something daily to help us. Yeah. And it's not it's not even just daily, it's moment by moment. We need to be able to check in and say, God, I'm feeling like so miserable right now. I'm feeling right. like I really want to snap at my kids or right, right. I'm feeling so stressed out about trying to get this website up and running or, mm-hmm. or trying to hire this VA or whatever it happens to be in our business. Mm-hmm. Like, what can I do right now? I'll give myself a time out, right? I'm going to go... Right. Basically. And just check in with those things. And it may not be, it may not be anything big. It may be like, oh God, I just need to. Give me five minutes, right? Like I know people who go and sit in their cars just to get the break and, you know, give me 10 minutes to go do this. And like we, like I said, before I got on here, I did a 15 minute nap just so that I could, um, you know, finish the rest of my day. And it's, you know, it's five o'clock in the evening, <laughs> you know, but I don't care. I, just, I needed it. No. And, and that's the thing. It's being unapologetic about what we need. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so important. I think for us as women to be able to stake that claim because mm-hmm. we're taught so often that our needs don't matter right. and that the caregiver, right. We have to put everybody else mm-hmm. first and, Oh, you'll get your time after everybody else has had theirs. Right. And that's BS because if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not putting ourselves in that position to show up in our most resourced best place, how, how are we supposed to serve? How are we supposed to give people the love? Effectively, right? Because otherwise you're so stressed out. You're like you said, you're screaming, you're yelling, you're just beyond. And then sometimes that can lead to like health issues and other things that um, are not not good. Which is exactly what I had happen. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with beyond Barre syndrome. So I was running two Etsy shops. I had a newborn, a mm. three-year-old. Um, we had just bought our first house. Everything was kind of coming together. My husband was working crazy hours. And I was just so utterly depleted. And right. then it was um, then my husband's father got sick and it was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. Um, Cause it was every- just like one more thing. I just need one more thing. <laughs> yeah. And everything started crumbling down and I ended up with Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and it strips the myelin coating of your nerves. I was completely paralyzed. I spent oh three gosh. months in the hospital on life support. Wow. Um, I had to learn how to walk and talk and eat and like do the whole nine all over again. So I am on a huge mission to save moms right. from having to go through that. It's like, let's create a revolution right. where moms feel empowered mm-hmm. to step into their purpose, to run the business, to do the thing because they're taking care of themselves. Right. And let's set that example for our kids. Let's show mm-hmm. them what it looks like to live a life well lived. I Let's love that. show them yeah. what it looks like to take care of ourselves mm-hmm. because we can tell them all day long, right? You know, that you need to take care of yourself. You need to exercise. You need to eat well. Mm-hmm. But if we're not doing those things for ourselves, right. Either we're lying and you don't really have to do that or we're a big old hypocrite. Right. And, Which know, it's most likely the hypocrite, right? right. <laughs> so, do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> right. So, so I think we owe it to ourselves first and foremost, but Mm -hmm. I know for most moms, our kids are such huge motivators for us. Right. Right. I feel like that's why, and that's why most moms start their business, right. Is so that they could be home with their kids, which is what happened with me. Like I, this is not my first business, but it was 
the longest business that I've had, you know, because my motivation was there. Like I wanted to be home with my kids. I can't tell you how many people said to me that I needed to go back to corporate. You need to do this for the security, especially when I went through my divorces, you know, so because I had two in the, in the amount of time, but um, you know, it was, it was like, Oh, you need to go back so that you can have this security. But I just knew what was best for me. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go back. Um, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, that led to a lot of long nights, a lot of um, neglect of myself. And so then I, you know, I didn't get sick or anything, but I could, I would just burn out, you know, it'd be in the middle of the day and a Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, you know, 12, and I'm laying in bed for the next, you know, day and a half, you know, because I've burnt myself out. And so I had to start putting in some boundaries and, um, you know, taking my phone off in my email off of my phone, taking off on the weekends and not working, you know, things like that so that I could actually have a life over having a business. Yeah. And I think like 90% of self-care is boundaries. Right. And we always think, especially as moms, like we have to set boundaries with our kids. Well, mm-hmm. a lot of that is teaching them that mom matters too. Right. Right. But when you have a business, it's like having a baby. It is. Right. You know, you're, you're responsible nurturing for this thing, it. you're nurturing right. it, you're trying to get it to grow up, right. Um, right. you're trying to get it to that next milestone. There's mm-hmm. all of these analogies. Um, right. You know, there is the poopy diaper part of business, <laughs> like, <laughs> the whole nine. And unfortunately, you never grow out of the poopy diaper phase in business, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you start hiring people. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought. Sorry. Diaper. No, it's just not your fault. I do it to myself all the time. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> what it's okay. About? You were talking about the many phases of running a business and how, you know, it's like a child and you're raising it up, you know, going through the different stages. Oh, yes, and boundaries. So mm-hmm. we often, we don't often think of it, but we need to set boundaries with our business too. Right, right. Like when when am I on, when am I in business Mm -hmm. and when am I outside of that? And I know for a lot of moms, especially ones that are trying to run their business at home with littles Mm -hmm. or who are homeschooling and trying to run a business, those lines get blurred because it's like, oh, they're playing for a minute. Let me just hop on and send this quick email or let me hop on and do this quick thing. Um, But what we end up doing is dividing ourselves and mm-hmm. we don't give our full attention to the tasks that we're doing and we don't give our full attention to the kids and then we don't end up finding the, the lanes that we're in we're not utilizing mm-hmm. our our most the resource self, self. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah so we're oops, just, sorry <laughs> just kicked my light stand and <laughs> um so we end up getting in this trap of Well, I don't switching back and forth between Mm -hmm. mom mode and business mode. Mm -hmm. And we're not our most resourced self when we're doing that. Right. Because um, that happens to me, as as I mentioned, my kids are older, you know, between 10 and 13. And um, so I'll try to work while they're here. And what will happen is they'll come in, they'll start talking to me, sharing their things. And I'm like, can you just please give me 10 minutes so that I can finish this up? And instead of it taking 10 minutes, it takes 30 minutes because they keep coming and asking and wanting, you know, and needing that attention. And so, you know, I see what you're saying, because one, it takes me longer to do the thing that I need to do. And then two, it takes away from the time from them, right? Because I'm giving this thing more attention than them. Yeah, it's like you have split attention. Mm -hmm. You're not able to be fully present with whatever it is. And I know like with my kids in particular, and it's so hard to get out of that mindset when you're like, I just have this one thing to do. Like, just give Mm -hmm. me that 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, But with little kids, it's often easier to just like, give them the 10 minutes right and they'll get sick of you (laughs) do something else and then you'll be able to sit down and concentrate on what you need to do that well that's very true very like I you know there's a difference I started my business seven years ago and I just had my boys with me and I remember I would be on my laptop and eat one would be on one side and one would be on the other side just so they could sit next to me they didn't want to do anything they just wanted to sit next to me while I was on my computer and that would go on 
for hours. Like, you know, they would get down and play and then they'd come back and sit with me, get down and play, you know, but at that time I was uh, really bad at my boundaries because I was trying so hard to make sure that this business was going to work because I had to prove it to everybody that I can make this happen. I can do this. I don't have to go back to corporate. You're wrong. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. I was so determined that I was, you know, workaholic. And like, like I said earlier, this is just definitely not healthy for anybody. So, you know, but then I was exercising and stuff a lot more than I am now, which (laughs) is probably because of where I live. I'm in Ohio. (laughs) I was in California during that time. So I was like walking and hiking every day. Oh yeah. You could actually get outside. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a a big difference. Yeah. For sure. So before you started coaching, what were you doing? Um, I, well, I, in another life, (laughs) I (laughs) was um, a natural resource biologist. And um, and then I ended up, there's like a weird series of events. And I ended up, um, I sold fire hydrants for a small period of time (laughs) and water meters, which um, is is as, as exciting as it sounds. Right. And, um, and then my company downsized and I, mm-hmm. I was home. Um, and that's when we decided to, that we were going to start a family. And right. as soon as I got pregnant, I could not imagine going back to work. Right. I just couldn't even imagine it. And mm-hmm. at that point I had like had it with other people telling me what to do. I, right. um, a little nonconformist in that way. I just don't follow directions or rules mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I started a business. I made custom wedding invitations for a time and then okay. I had an Etsy shop. Um, mm-hmm. And I and I was just starting to gain momentum in the Etsy shop. Um, when you got sick. When, you know, yeah. And then after you got better, you probably realized like this is something that has to change. Yeah. It just didn't feel sustainable anymore. Um, mm-hmm. I also had some physical limitations. Like I wasn't able to to actually do the crafts that I was right, doing right. for my Etsy shop before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it's actually a funny story. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I had been wanting to dye my hair purple for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I also been wanting to get a tattoo, mm-hmm. uh, like a sleeve, because I have a tattoo on my foot. Um, right. And I'd been like, I don't know, you know, getting nervous about it. And it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Right. And after that, I was like, screw it. I'm right. doing it. Like, I don't <laughs> I care. I can do all the things. <laughs> I'm doing all the things. Like, I'm right. traveling. I'm doing everything. I'm not waiting to live anymore. Which is great. Yeah. So I, I dyed my hair purple. Um, I got a full sleeve mm-hmm. um, and a couple other tattoos. And Was that your first one? Like, the sleeve was, like, your first ever? No, I actually. Um, I, oh, you I had, had the, a, the foot one. Yep, I had the foot one. Um and yeah, I actually, I got a couple when I got out of the hospital. Um, mm-hmm. One of them is a, a hummingbird on my hand to remind mm-hmm. me to to follow my um, follow my interests wherever I go. I don't know if you're familiar with the the talk by Elizabeth Gilbert, "The Flight of the Hummingbird." No, but I love the way it sounds. Yeah, it's amazing. It's basically about like anybody who's having trouble like, finding what their purpose is. That some people don't have a set defined purpose. You know, some right. people know like from the time they're Birth, little, they're gonna they be, know. Right. They're gonna be a doctor or they're gonna be a writer. But some of us right. are hummingbirds and we right. we get interested in this thing and we go over there and do that. And then we yeah. get interested in something else and we go over there and do that. Um so that was really important for me. I need, and, I feel like I need to go listen to that because yeah. that's me like wrapped up in one sentence. Yeah. And it definitely takes the pressure off to be like, no, this is the thing that I'm doing right now. I'm sure right. it's changed. I used to say all the time when I was, um, you know, before I even started my business, like when I would cut when I was out and I was, you know, talking to other people and they would ask, like, how did you get into design? Because I taught myself design. It wasn't something I went to school for. And um, I said, you know, here I am wanting to start my own business. And yet I'm trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And I was in my 30s. You know, I had no idea, like, you know, I'm like still, you know, I was still searching because I had tried all these things and they weren't really working for me. And even when I was working in corporate, 
I think the longest I ever stayed anywhere was two years because I would get bored and then I would leave, you know? Yep. And so then when, I, you know, I was going to get my real estate license and then I, you know, but then I had, I got pregnant and I was like, I need to start my own thing because when I was dropping my son off at daycare, I was crying every day. I hated it. You know, drive away, just like, I have to figure out what to do. So then I started, you know, doing all this research and everything. And I, and I noticed one thing is that everybody needed a website. And I was like, I'm going to teach myself how to make websites. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so easy. I'm going to make so much money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little did I know, you know, what is involved in doing a website, let alone an online business and doing like the marketing and, and all of the things that go into that. But, you know, it was like, it was just like that. Once I had my mind up, I'm going to be a designer. This is what I'm going to do. I just went for it because I was so sick of, like I said, not knowing what I was going to be as an adult. Yeah. And I, I think we get, we get stuck in that trap a lot. And I think for moms in particular, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's like this double edged sword of, of we want motherhood to be everything. For mm -hmm. us. You know, we want it to fulfill us in a way that nothing else ever has. Right. But then we also want to have value in the world outside of motherhood. So right. we're always kind of dancing that line. And some moms are completely 110% fulfilled by, right. by being just quote unquote, just a mom, right. You know, and, and some of us aren't, mm -hmm. and some of us feel like they're better moms when they're outside of the home or when they're, and it's yeah. so personal. Um, and it's really important, I think, for us to honor that and to be authentic and not try to fit into something that we we think that we societal should. norms or that yeah. we feel is like the way to be. I, I agree. I never wanted to be a stay at home mom, but I always, you know, always wanted to have a business, you know, like, because I think I'm just so independent. I can never rely on anybody else to care for me. Yeah. You know? I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I, when I got out of the hospital and I was like going through all of these changes and I'm like, I'm living life, I'm doing the thing. Um, it really called into question, like, what's next for me? Right. And I was actually headed to the hairdressers one day. Mm -hmm. um, and it just hit me, like, out of the blue, upside the head, walking down the sidewalk. I'm like, I think I'm going to be a life coach. Love it. And, like, when I sat down in her chair, she's like, what's new? And I'm like, well, I think I'm going to be a life coach. <laughs> and she's like, what's that? So right. we started talking about the whole thing. Um, I had hired a coach before when I had right. had an Etsy shop. Um, trying to figure out how to balance motherhood mm -hmm. and business. Mm -hmm. And um, it just kind of snowballed from there. Like within a week, I would I had signed up for coaching school right. and I was in the thing. And so over the last four years, I've, yeah. I've gotten two certifications in coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I've like gun training and a whole bunch of other healing modalities to kind of help break through some of the things that hold us back as moms. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's really exciting to see where it's all headed. I love that because, you know, sometimes it's just so hard to really even figure out what you want to be, you know, and then when, once you get it, it's just like, I'm going to go for it. And I love that you moved so quickly and you found something, found a calling for you that I think that's what I was saying earlier. That's the way I felt with this was that, you know, I just thought of it and then I just went for it, you know, and I'm still trying it's like messy at this moment it's like really messy but I'm still going through it I'm still getting to you know to the part where um you know it's going to be great and you know I'm looking forward to that just because it's a new challenge you know I've been doing design for so long I think that I was ready for a new thing yeah yeah and not that I have quit it you know what I mean <laughs> yeah and, but those nudges though that our intuition that's our soul shining through right. and telling us here, there's this thing that like you were, you were yeah. meant for more. There's, there's still more for you to do. And that's one of the things um, that shows up. Like the tagline on my website is mom and more coaching because mm -hmm. we are more, more than, than a mom. mom. Right. And there's so much more to motherhood. Like there's all this ways that more fits into it. And mm -hmm. I have this whole philosophy about like the ampersand. I have an ampersand sign above my desk because mm -hmm. We, we get to be and it's right. not either or, or it's right. not 
we're a mom or a business owner. We mm-hmm. mom and a business owner. Right. You know, you're not ever just a mom. You're a mom and a human. Right. You're a mom and a partner. You're there's right. all of these it doesn't layers. define you like solely. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's so much more to who you are and what you have to offer than than just mm-hmm. being one thing. Yeah, I love that because, you know, it's hard sometimes, I think, for moms to they define themselves outside of being a mom. And, you know, I went through uh, five years of infertility. And so um, when I actually got pregnant, I really just couldn't even believe it, you know, but I had envisioned something more, like you said, there was something it was going to be greater than what I thought it was. I did not realize how hard it was to be a mom. And, you know, that was even before I started running my, you know, started my business, but um, you know, it's just like, you love this little human so much. You're just like, I'm going to do all the things for them, you know, but um, I, I remember like, I, um, I have a lot of business friends who are not moms. And so I think like this um, was a calling for me because I felt like, the non-mom business owners, they can't understand the struggle that we have with the, and I don't say balance, but, you know, juggling all of these things that we have to deal with and still, um, you know, coming out looking shiny and pretty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not, not like we've been stomped on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is tough most days. It's right. really tough. Right. Yeah. I think there's, there's things generally speaking about parenting that there's just no way you could possibly know what it's going to do right. to you or for you mm-hmm. until you experience it yourself. Um, and in that, I found so many strengths that I didn't know that I had. Mm. Um, I found, I found this huge calling and, um, and dedication to healing Mm. and to moving through the stories and to being better for my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, And now that I'm, you know, further along on my journey, I'm recognizing that the importance of being able to do that for myself. Right. But had I not had them there to, to cause that. Right. Um, you know, to Reaction, be the catalyst right. for that, right. then I don't know if I ever would have done that for myself. Yeah, I agree with that because I, and I always say too, since we're, you know, equating our business as a baby, but I always say that if you ever have any issues in your life, like start a business because they're going to come front and center and you're going to have to deal with all of them, right? It will shine a light on that. <laughs> like there is no tomorrow. Yes. And the same thing with being, uh, being a parent, right? You see, you, yeah. you like see parts of yourself that you like, and then parts of yourself, then you're like, wait a minute, I need to, to <laughs> fix this. <laughs> this is yeah. not good. <laughs> is that what I look like when I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they remind you, you know, like, you, then you start feeling like your mom because you start like, oh my God, my mom used to say that to me, you know, <laughs> and then you, all, you start oh. to empathize with your mom, right? It's like, oh, no wonder she was so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's definitely a fine line that we walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah. My, my four-year-old in particular, she is, she is a spitfire and yeah. there's so much of me that loves that about her. Mm-hmm. And then there's that, the mom side that's just like, girl, down. Yeah. <laughs> just do what I ask one time, one time, just one time. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I, oh, now that I have two girls, I completely can understand. I always wanted to have daughters, but I never wanted to get pregnant again after being pregnant twice. Like, you know, after wanting to get pregnant for so long and then I got pregnant, I was like, this is not, not, <laughs> not what I expected. <laughs> this is not fun at all. And, um, you know, so I always wanted three kids. And then uh, I was after two, I was like, I'm good. And, you know, and then I got blessed with my, with my two nieces. And, you know, so I'm lucky now to have the two daughters and I can see the difference in 
the two, you know, you can see, you know, if you don't have a daughter, then you can't really, I guess, see, you know, you don't really get it as much. Yeah. Cause I, I thought I did, you know, cause I'm a girl, like I, th- I, th- I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> like I grew up with a brother and a dad and I was married to a man. I was like, right. boys, like, yeah, they're easy. <laughs> no. And I say it so often now that now my son is starting to repeat it. Like, Oh, we're just a different breed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their needs are so different, you know, and, um, and their and, thought processes. And yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, okay. We're going to uh, wrap this up now. If anybody wants to find you online, where can they find you? Um, they can find me online. My website is um, caseytabalt.com. I don't know if I should spell it. You can't. You should because. <laughs> All right. But I'll put the link down below as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, my first name, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y. And then my last name last name is Tabalt, T-A-B-O-L-T.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Casey Tabalt Coaching, on Facebook at Casey Tabalt Coaching. And I have a free Facebook group called The Undefined Mama. Oh. And I do weekly live trainings every Thursday on different topics um, related to motherhood. I do lots of stuff on self-care and authenticity mm-hmm. and aligned motherhood. And um, we're starting to get a beautiful little community in there to support moms. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. It's, you know, we need as much support as we can get. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for, for jumping on and telling, you know, talking about what it's like to be a mom business owner. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And there you have it. I want to encourage you to remember that being a mom who runs her own business is not easy. We all struggle, but just keep moving forward and don't forget to make time for yourself. As moms, we are usually the first thing to go to the bottom of the list. If your business is overwhelming you and you need real solutions, not just some sugar-coated suggestions, apply to work with me at ritasuzanne.com slash apply.